Welcome back to another GSC. So I want to do some talk about turbos that go on 6.5 liter diesels. Obviously your stock turbos came from the factory. They're a little small. They make a lot of drive pressure. They beat the crap out of the heads. They're very restrictive. They make a lot of EGT issues and they're usually just not a very good performing turbo. So a lot of guys do HX, 35, 40. I have an uh, S300 on Casper. And I'll put the link to the video explaining what that is at the end of this. Um, when you're doing an HX35 swap, you need to make sure that you get a 56 millimeter compressor wheel. Since I can't talk. <coughs> you want to make sure that you use a 56 millimeter compressor wheel and you want a 58 uh, millimeter exhaust turbine. You don't want the little itty bitty ones that come on an HX40W2. If you buy an HX40W2, you need to make sure that you get the right one. There are some out there that are a, 60, a 56, 58, or a 56, 60. There are some that are a 50, 54. There are some that are 54, 58. 54, 58 runs like a WH1C, which I ran on Casper for years without a problem. So, just so people are aware, there's a lot of smaller variants and when I put the links out and say hey you can run a CKO HX35 or HX40W2 I try to use the links that have 56 millimeter compressor wheel and 58 exhaust sometimes vendors change I can't always keep up with it but it's just something for you guys to think about the other thing is is that you want to make sure that whatever HX you end up with I'm going to flip this over here on my rusty, trusty 54 Chevy because everybody needs a workbench like that. <clears throat> and you need to be able to look inside these foot flanges. And on the inside edge here, there is a number stamped. This one is a 14. The ones that are stamped a 14 are usually the ones you want. You want a 14 or a 16. 12s will work, but 12s are very tight. And you end up with, again, a lot of dry pressure, a lot of heat. EGTs can get out of hand, so try to get a little larger. Don't stay so small. If you're going for an HX40, get a 60, 67, or a 60, 68 wheel combo. You want that 60 millimeter compressor, you want that um, 67 or 68 millimeter exhaust exducer, and you want either a 14 or a 16 housing on those. Now, you can get up to an 18, it's going to be a little lazy, but it's also going to have less heat and dry pressure requirement on the back side. So, and that goes back to, same thing, if you buy a knockoff HX40, a lot of times the exhaust flange bolt pattern here is not the same as genuine. You have a lot of issues with then downpipe adapters not fitting, you have issues with wastegates not fitting, and it just typically ends up being a bigger thorn in your side than a bonus. Um, the other thing is buy a quality downpipe adapter that goes off the back of these. I have a video that explains kind of the assembly of putting an HX40 on. I'll probably try to put the link for that in the end of this as well, but it just, you need to make sure you get the right parts. You're going to need an oil feed line reducer. That's something that you can get from your ID Soul, Quadstar, whoever you fancy. You need a good oil drain kit. You can get it from Quadstar, Leroy, KB Diesel, whoever you fancy. You can get an upper intake plumber from Leroy. You can get it from Quadstar, whoever you fancy. And you're going to want to go with not a stock upper intake. And the other thing is, is that take the time and go purchase There's a nice little V-band adapter that goes on the end of these turbos right here. Don't cut the V-band off. Don't, don't do that. Go get the little sleeve. It's going to add about two inches to the end of the turbo, but then you can slip your boot right on. And you get a nice good seal. stays tight. You're not leaking out of it. You're not having fluids going places they should not. And you're not losing boost. Because a lot of guys lock that off and they want to put a boot on it. I've, I've been there. I've done that. And I'm here to tell you, don't. It's just not worth the headache. So get your little V-band adapter. Put him on. Do that. Um, the other thing is, is that you need to make sure that whatever you end up doing, you will need a tune. 
if you do an HX35, HX40, and you are definitely going to need an upper intake plenum. You're going to want a lift pump prior to that. You're going to want to check and make sure your harmonic balancer is not junk. And just make sure the truck is healthy before you go adding power to it. The other thing is you can keep it at a stock-ish power level using an HX Turbo with a good tune in your 94, 95 through 2000s. And with a 92, 93, you'll see power gains. You're going to see cooler intake temps. You're going to see the truck run and perform better as a whole. But as long as you're not turning the pump up or advancing it or, or making any kind of moves, that 92, 93 should last you forever with one of these turbos on it with less stress on the bottom end, less stress on the heads, and overall the truck's going to perform better. So just things to kind of consider, things to think about. If you're buying an S300, you'll want a 60-68. You're going to want a 0.88 AR T4 Hope Scroll Housing with a Marmon HX40 outlet. You're going to want it to probably have a cast compressor wheel, and you'll be off to the races because I have found that my billet compressor wheel, yeah, it's really nice. Yes, it dropped my air intakes temp some, but it also has increased spool time because the wheel is actually heavier. So it doesn't really make a difference. As long as you've got a good tune, left pump, it'll make up for it. You're not going to notice it. If you are doing a stick shift truck, HX35 is really the way to go with like a tighter housing, like a 14 or so housing. If you're doing a stick shift truck with an HX40, run a tighter housing like a 14. If you have a stick shift truck and you're out of parade and you like to party, do an S300 with a 60-68 with a .88 housing like what's on Casper. And yeah, she's going to take a little more pedaling, but I, I think you'll have a good time with it. Lower air intake temps, lower EGTs, lower drive pressure. Physically, it will run worlds better. I, I have done enough testing over the years that I love HX turbos. They're a great bolt on swap for anybody. I would tell anybody at this point to go buy the proper size S300 before you go spend the money on an HX. But I will tell everybody to go spend the money on an S300. You've got to make your own downpipe adapter. Yeah, you've got to do a little bit of your own custom fab work. The stock drain will work. The stock feed line works. There's no extra fittings. You basically make a downpipe adapter. You get what you need to put your upper intake on. And you're off to the races. You do your 4-inch air intake. And it's great. So... That's another thing to consider. If you want, great. If not, that's okay too. So I hope this is kind of informative and helps some of you guys out. Um, I'm going to throw another video together and talk about upgrades worthwhile in order real quick. And that way, guys that are new to the channel or people that are new to owning six fives, they can have a little newer, fresher content on what I think you should probably do from the get-go. And... We'll just see how it goes. So I hope this is informative. I hope it helps some of you guys out there kind of on the fence about buying turbos. If you got questions, email me, gingersnapcustoms21 at gmail.com, or hit me up over the Facebook page, Ginger Snap Customs. I have photo albums full of stuff and things, and I have no problems answering 6.5 diesel questions till the cows come home. So hit me up, let me know what you need, and hopefully this helps you guys out. We will catch you on the flip side.